this video is brought to you by Mint Mobile. So this is the OnePlus 12. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick unboxing and then just run through the setup and then just give you my first impressions. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. So here we have the iconic OnePlus 12 box in all its glory and all its red, just OnePlus branding all around the box itself. OnePlus plus Hasselblad here at the bottom. And on the back, you just get some information about the device. So in this case, I got the 16 gig and 512 storage model in the flowy emerald Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on board and no pool tabs. But I do like that OnePlus does include safety stickers of uh, some sort so that if these were ripped open, you would know that someone messed with the contents of the box. So let's just go ahead and open this up. Let's see what kind of presentation do we got here? No, ooh, what's this? Thank you for a decade together. Oh, that's right. Isn't this like a a big anniversary for OnePlus? This is pretty cool. It looks like these are a bunch of OnePlus users, maybe from the Red Cable community of some sort. Very cool. Never settle. Right in the front here, little container. Inside you get a welcome guide, quick guide, safety guide, a membership card. Oh, look at that. Red Cable Club. I thought it was a Target gift card for a second there. <laughs> as well as a SIM card ejection tool. And then a USB-A to USB-C adapter. And then you get the phone right at the top here. Ooh, this is this has got some heft to it. It's definitely got some heft to it. Right, let's put this aside for a sec. So then beneath your phone, you also get your charger. So this is the SuperVOOC charger. Now this is a proprietary SuperVOOC charging. If you were to use this block with say your Samsung device, it would only charge at, I believe 25 watts max. Then you get your red cable here, which should be USB-A to USB-C. Nice that OnePlus still includes the cable, it's a cable and charger, especially because you know it's advertised with super fast charging and you can only really get that with this specific charger. So it would be kind of dumb to try and tell us and market it, market it as you got super fast charging, but you got to spend an extra X amount to buy this. So glad that it comes with it. And it's a quick bonus before I even get to the phone. I'm gonna make you wait a couple seconds. I did get a case from Amazon. It's pretty hard to find cases for the OnePlus 12. Less and less big manufacturers have been making cases for the OnePlus devices. So that's kind of disappointing. It's a pretty Simple case, plastic, silicone, frosted glass plastic on the back, or not glass, just frosted plastic with MagSafe capabilities. And it protects a little bit of the camera bump as well. So uh, I just got it for one, the MagSafe capabilities, but also just something to protect the phone for when I'm out and about. So, but without further ado, let's just go right into the phone here. It's just, ooh, nice. Just slides right off. And there you go. You got the, OnePlus 12 and it's clean, clean screen. You can maybe tell there is a screen protector installed on the device. Up close look, you can see there on the camera, there's a little ring around there and that's the screen protector. But then looking at the back, ooh, I, I like this color. I like the flowy emerald here. And the texture is very reminiscent of the OnePlus 11 for sure. But it definitely looks very gorgeous shiny little marble emerald and then <laughs> the camera bump actually has a, a bit of a glitter to it as well not sure if i like that but it still looks kind of interesting and unique and different quick close up here look you can see that glittery look to it it's a bit extra i will say here we have the one plus 11 you can see the camera bump is definitely just a bit bigger now like a size large over a size medium. And yeah, the OnePlus 12 definitely has a bit more heft to it for sure. So we'll run through the setup process, but first I'm actually gonna insert the SIM card into the OnePlus 12. Currently, I am on the S24 Ultra for the last three weeks. So I'm gonna switch over for the OnePlus 12 for a little bit and uh, see how it feels, see how it runs. And, and yeah, so let me just pop the SIM out of this one and insert it into the OnePlus 12 which actually brings us nicely into today's video partner, Mint Mobile. Have you ever thought to yourself, why the f is my phone bill so damn high? Well, 
I got you covered with Mint. So Mint offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month. You don't have to sacrifice speed, coverage, or data because they're built on the largest 5G network. And they're able to keep prices so low because they actually do all their business online. You can't find a physical location anywhere. So easily go online, select the plan that you want, and then order either an eSIM and instantly get yourself set up or order a physical SIM card if your phone isn't eSIM compatible. I personally have been a Mint Mobile customer for well over three years and I just signed up for my next year. So I have no plans and leaving Mint anytime soon. And I don't notice a difference in my day-to-day, -day, whether I'm using my mobile data or I'm using Wi-Fi, so I'm able to do my everyday stuff from streaming music, browsing social media, and playing games. And Mint also offers a modern family plan with as little as two lines, which is actually what my personal family does as well. They're all on a family plan. And switching to Mint takes as little as 15 minutes, so it takes 15 minutes to pay as low as $15 a month. And right now, new customers can get any plan for just $15 a month. That includes the unlimited plan, which is normally $30 a month. So why wait? Get yourself started right now using the links down below, trimentmobile.com forward slash taco tech, or use the QR code on the screen to get yourself started and set up. It really does help out the channel when you use my link. So thank you. And let me know down in the comments if you made the switch. Okay, so the SIM card is officially switched over to the OnePlus 12. So running through the setup here, you get a nice hello menu. You select your language next your region, just agree to some legal info here. Just gonna agree to the ones that are required. And then connect to Wi-Fi. All right, so next it's properly setting up the device with my mobile data. And now we're gonna be able to copy over data from an existing Google account to this phone. So we're able to do that via a cable. So let's go ahead and connect these phones. You are able to use the cable that came in the box, or you can just use any existing USB-C to USB-C cable. All right, so this is gonna be a transfer from a Galaxy device. Curious to know what kind of process it is. Hopefully it's a pretty simple process and not too big of a deal. All right, so on the OnePlus, or not the OnePlus, on the S24 Ultra, I'm being prompted here if I wanna copy my data to the new device. Copy, put my biometrics. So immediately, you probably can't tell, but on the top left corner, getting emails that my Google accounts have been transferred or are being transferred is probably just giving me a notification. All right, so here you have the options then to select what kind of data you want to transfer over your apps, your contacts, or photos and videos and messages and call history and settings. I had to transfer pretty much everything except for my photos and videos just because I have to keep the photos and videos you know, to each device so I know which phone took what. Plus I use Google Photos as well and save those photos in the cloud. So once you select what you wanna copy, you just select copy and it starts the copying of the data. Next, we're just agreeing to some Google services, accepting, and you have then the option to set up your biometrics. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a fingerprint, set a lock screen first. So you do have to set up a lock screen Anytime you want to set up any kind of biometric, I'm going to do numeric. Interesting. So it's giving me a warning here that if I can't remember my lock screen password, uh, I won't be able to access my phone at all. So do your best to remember it. <laughs> nice little warning there. All right. So simple as just clicking down, holding your finger down for a split second. The vibration feels very nice. I will say, oh, that vibration motor feels very good. The OnePlus 11 already had a really good haptic system, so I'm not surprised the OnePlus 12 is pretty much following in its footsteps. All right, fingerprint on. Oh, that sucks. Doesn't let you set up more than one during the setup. That's all right. Well, we'll also set up the face. All right, enroll your face for best results. Hold the device 20 centimeters to 50 from your face in an environment that is neither too bright nor too dim. Oh, what? <laughs> Did it really just wreck it? Okay. My face wasn't even fully in the circle. The camera was like, okay, well, I guess we'll find out how that performs later on, either in the first impressions or in a future video. Um, continue setup. What else do you got me to set up though? All right, now it's not listening. All right, so continuing on from here, I'm gonna skip this. Yeah, go ahead and skip that. All right, so now it's just literally transferring the files now. Am I stuck here? Can I not go home? Wow, okay. So it's like I have to wait for this to, to transfer over, Um. so. We'll come back in about eight minutes. Okay, looks like we got a couple of features here. Oh yeah, that's that's good. 
Okay. Oxygen OS gets started. And it throws me right in. Ah, oh, swipe down to access the shell for the notification drawer. I hate that Oxygen OS does this now. So it's always just one or the other, the shelf or your notifications when you swipe down. So I like to set that to the notification drawer myself. So anytime I swipe down, my notifications display. So, but taking a look at the rest of the software, if you've never used Oxygen OS before, it's somewhat like stock Android, but you've got a bunch of other small little settings that you can adjust, you can, you can customize. Like you can go, for example, to your wallpaper and style. And one of the things that I really like is that in the colors, you have the option of selecting your own color. So if you go to wallpaper and colors, you got custom, or you can choose different uh, combinations of colors here. So go to custom, and then you can drag around what specific colors you want to use for your system from your wallpaper. Of course, there wasn't really many options in that green, but it's really nice that you can go ahead and select the specific colors that you want. And then if you want to make those icons match the colors, you go into your icon settings here, then go to custom and then select, you know, if you want to customize the icon itself, you can, but if you go down to adopt system colors, you turn that on and then your icons will turn into that color. Not all apps are supported, but a good majority of them are. So if you, oh, here's a new setting that, that wasn't on the OnePlus 11 before. The app animation speed, you can now adjust the speed of the animation for when an app is opening and closing. That's new. So right now it's on medium. So if I open the Play Store, you know, it's not too, too bad, which I actually complained about the speed of animations on the OnePlus 11. So would this make, oh yes, this is actually kind of nice. I like that. I like that a lot more. So I'm gonna definitely keep that on fast. Cause I definitely like that animation speed being a little bit quicker. Don't get me wrong. The smoothness definitely looks clean, but the speed, oh, it makes the phone feel even snappier. Yeah. I 100% recommend turning that to fast, but definitely up to you to decide that. And something that's brand new to this OnePlus 12 is the brightness. It's supposed to be a lot brighter now. So it has the ability to go to like what? Almost 4,000 nits. I think you can, you can already see how it's affecting the camera here. All right, so side to side here, I'm gonna set them to max brightness. I, ooh, okay, you definitely notice a difference. You definitely can see a difference between the OnePlus 11 and the OnePlus 12. If I turn on auto brightness and then slide it all the way up, is there a difference there? Yes, there's a difference there. I'm not sure how it compares to off and on. Yeah, I didn't notice much of a difference there, but still the OnePlus 12 is definitely a lot brighter so that's a nice bonus and out of the box your screen resolution is set to standard so it is set to a 1080p quality so i definitely recommend setting that to either high if you want the sharpest or i personally like to use the auto select so it's supposed to automatically switch between the 1080p and the 1440p depending on what you're doing on your display depending on the content so i definitely recommend that personally so that's what i'm going to use and usually i don't notice a difference so i think it does a good job of being able to just switch between them as needed. And here you can see the spec difference between the OnePlus 12 versus the OnePlus 11. Sora just double the size because I just got that model. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 versus Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Extra 400 million power battery. Screen size increased in the cameras down here. Front is now a 32 megapixel, okay. Rear is a 50 and a 40 and a 48 and a 64 versus 32. So it looks like the telephoto got improved here. In fact, let's just switch over to the cameras real quick. Let's, let's see. All right. So ultra wide looks like it's probably going to end up being the same. Then you have your main lens, which would be like the, what, the 48 megapixel. And then the telephoto, I think is 3X. Yeah, 3X on the OnePlus 12 which then allows you to do like an optical quality with 6X. But I think the biggest improvement here is gonna be the front. So if you switch to the front, you should have now the ability, go to video. So it's set to 1080p, but yes, finally. I say finally because the OnePlus 10 Pro was also 1080p, but now you get 4K on the front. Finally, on the OnePlus 11, only 1080p. It's about damn time. 
but I won't provide any samples just now, but this is just a quick first impressions overview. Um, so going through the rest of the hardware though, got your alert slider on the left hand side now, instead of on the right hand side, you can see here, the OnePlus 11 has it on the right hand side. OnePlus 12 now has it on the left hand side, but it does the same thing, which is between mute and silent or silent slash mute to vibrate to then ring. Then over here, you have your power button followed by the volume rocker at the top. So this kind of copies the S24 Ultra, as you can see right over here, power button and then the volume rocker. And so here we're watching MKVHC's video on the OnePlus 12. So we're watching the OnePlus 12 review on the OnePlus 12. I mean, it looks good. It, it, the OnePlus 11 was pretty good as well. It looked pretty clean. OnePlus 12, it's not any different. Definitely looks pretty clean, sharp, bright and colorful. It was something I do want to kind of try out real quick. Now, I don't know if it's a good idea because the phone is warm, but the aquatic display of some sort, like if you were to put water on the display here. Okay, so right now it's not causing any kind of, oh, it just caused one accidental touch there. But if I'm, oh, it just caused another one. But if I'm using it, I mean, uh, there's not too much water on here, but it did cause a couple accidental touches there. And I mean, it's, it's responsive now. It's like responding to my touches as I'm moving around and swiping around, so. We'll definitely test that a little bit more thoroughly, but um, first impressions are excellent touches will probably definitely happen, but seems to be running just fine. Oh, you also have the IR blaster up here. This little circle right here, I believe that's what it is. So you should have the ability to control pretty much any TV or anything that uses an infrared sensor of some sort to be controlled. So that's pretty cool. Last thing I want to do is just plug it in real quick. So we're at 31%. I just want to see if I can get maybe 5% in like 30 seconds or something. Cause that'd be crazy. Okay. So that's new. OnePlus now tells us how long it's going to take to fully charge. And look at that from 33%, 20 minutes, bruh. What? That's insanely fast. 20 minutes from 33%. So I can imagine if I'm, a, if I'm completely dead, probably just around 30 minutes. So that's where I'm going to cut it with the OnePlus 12. Let me know what you guys want to know down in the comments below. What kind of comparisons do you want to see? I'll definitely compare it to the OnePlus 11. I am trading in the OnePlus 11 for the OnePlus 12. I think it will be worth it in the end. Um, but I also compare it to the likes of the S24 Ultra, the Pixel 8 Pro, and then the iPhone 15 Pro Max, just to see how it compares to those devices. But stick around for reviews for different kind of videos involving the OnePlus 12. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and peace.